Welcome, everyone, to the 24th episode of the Vertical Church Podcast. We're talking about the values of Vertical Church. i got Phil here with me. So this, this first point is about inviting and training and sending. So just for the person who has no idea what Vertical is about, uh, we've already gone over the first three points, and this is the fourth in the list. And Phil, if you could just kind of walk us through what does it mean to invite someone well, yeah, and, and just to explain like why this is even important is like we're trying to go over what do we value as a church. So, you know, whether you're listening to this years from now, you you listen to the sermon recently, like whatever it is, we want to be very clear mm-hmm. about what we believe as a church. You know, Chick-fil-A has an interesting thing. To be unclear is to be unkind. Mm-hmm. And so for us, like if someone's just looking through our website or whatever, like we want to be really clear about what's important to us because – you may read through it and go, oh my gosh, like I resonate so much. Like you, you'll, you'll come fired up just because you're like, I click with what's going on here. Or you may read through our values and go, man, I'm so uninterested. And, and we just save you the time. Like you don't like us and that's right. okay. You know, so we just are going through our values to be super clear. And, and, and what it means to invite at Vertical is, is different than maybe what church has told people to invite. And a lot of times invitation in church has been go out, Tell your entire community to come to church. That's not what we're talking about Mm -hmm. here at Vertical. We want you to go out into your entire community and invite those people to follow Jesus. And and so we're trying to turn it all around of the invitation model that's been used in churches. And so, and the reason we do that is nowhere in the New Testament do I ever read, go forth and invite people to Vertical Church. Haven't seen it in the New Testament. I don't care what translation you're reading. (laughs) Not going to find it. I do find very clearly in the New Testament, though, go out and invite people to follow Jesus. And so if that's what the New Testament is saying, then that's what we want to apply. You're totally welcome to invite people to our church, and we hope you do. And and quite frankly, as the pastor, I'm telling you, if you ever invite someone to our church, I feel very honored Mm -hmm. that you would entrust your name or reputation to go, I'm going to trust that this church, its leaders, its its people like are going to treat this person well. They're going to hear the word of God taught clearly in an encouraging but also challenging way, um, and that worship is going to done in a way that's very well done. But it's going to clearly point people to Jesus yeah. and not ourselves. And so for me, that that's what invitation looks like. It is not come bring all your friends to church. We hope you do, but please let's be very clear that that's not our goal here. Our goal is all of us going out into the community and inviting people to follow Jesus. So you're telling me Jesus is at other people's churches too? <laughs> I love the joke. And and the answer is, shockingly, if you didn't know that was a joke, the answer is yes. <laughs> like, Vertical has a standing belief that, that the Lord is moving at other churches, and we're rooting for that to happen. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's a team effort. It's not. It's us against the enemy. It's not us against the church across the street. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love, too, is we, we always talk about the parable of the great feast in Luke 14. And the, the guy, the, the servant, was told to go out into the country lanes and tell the people, be compelling to those people, and invite them back to the banquet. And in order for us to, like, most of the time, you, you, you know, if you don't know the person that you're inviting to Jesus, like, you have to have an invitational spirit about you, like a warm welcoming type of of deal there and i think if we operate in a posture where the way we interact with the people around us is invitational in itself like they're going to be more likely to like reconsider jesus if they've been burned before yeah i love that you brought that up because i don't think at the great banquet and i don't think it's because i don't see it anywhere in the scripture is it's gonna be like hey there's gonna be a table for like the church of god people and there's gonna be a table for the baptist people and a table for the episcopalian people and so on and so on and so on and vertical will be at the non-denominational table i don't think any of that's gonna exist yeah. there's just gonna be tables at the banquet for followers of jesus mm. and like that's what unites us and that's what we should be really about and so i, I love that you brought that up because it's just something that's so important to us as a church of like just because we're non-denominational does not mean we're against denominations that we're actually rooting for other denominations it just helps people you know understand that you know we're just doing things a little bit differently mm-hmm. and 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 that's okay but I, we promise we're on the same team because we're all about jesus yeah yeah awesome okay so that's one piece of the three piece like first point yeah um so invite train and send 
So if we, we're inviting people to Jesus, say they happen to come to Vertical, um, then like we're training up people at Vertical. That's like a part of our mission. So what does that mean to train someone up? So Jesus actually talks about in Matthew 28 with the Great Commission, like go forth to all the nations, you know, baptizing them, make disciples. And he says something, he says, teach them my commands. Mm -hmm. So we don't think it's really enough to invite people to follow Jesus. It, it is enough in the sense like that can save them, but like yeah. we feel like it's not enough in the sense of what Jesus calls us as Christians to mm -hmm. do. And he says, go and teach them my commands. And so we feel like to train people to really follow Christ well, we have to teach people what Jesus actually says. Yeah. You know, to be a follower of Jesus, we should understand his teachings, like his ways, like what does he think? How does he approach things? Like that should all matter to us. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we want to train people up. We, we, that's why vertical groups are so important for us. We want you to spend time communally uh, with other people who are going to point people to, you, to Jesus, but also encourage you to grow with each other mm. um, because we don't believe the New Testament calls us to do life alone. Yeah. And so that's why we're trying to make a ton of groups is so that they're invitational, but also you know, an ability to be trained up. Mm. And um, I, I think that's just so important because we don't want to be a church that just invites you to follow Jesus. Mm. That we want it to be one of the things we do as a church. Yeah. Um, and so it's so important to us that people understand what does Jesus actually say. Because how in the world are we supposed to follow a guy if we don't know what he teaches? Right. Yeah, and we are made for community. Like, mm -hmm. Paul didn't go out and start all these churches and then say, good luck, yeah. you know? Like, he came back around three or four times across the Mediterranean multiple times to go and revisit these places and make sure that they're on track, you know? Like, these are the things they're struggling with. The, the last church that I went to, they were struggling with this. Let's see how we can work together as a team in order to like get closer to Jesus. And that's what the goal of the community groups and everything that we do here is catered toward community mm -hmm. and like having each other's back and figuring out how we can fight together as a team against the enemy, against the world and the things that we're struggling with. Yeah, and I think I think one of the cool thing about vertical groups is that you don't have to come to vertical to be part of our groups. Right. Like we actually are honored if you go to another church but just want to plug in with something we're doing. Like that's great. Like to go to a vertical group this, the, the criteria is not that you come to vertical. Right. We actually would love that any of our groups offer enough value to people that you can come in from another church or not go to church at all and want to be part of a group. Like, all of it's great to us. Mm -hmm. if, if As long as you understand when you come to a vertical group, like, we're going to point you to Jesus and to try to help build community. The last point on this is send. It's invite, train, and send. It's kind of like the mantra, I guess, yeah. <laughs> of, of vertical. Um, and so sending, uh, what, what does that look like? So it, it comes, uh, you know, all of this invite, train, send comes out of uh, Matthew 4 when he's inviting Peter, you know, um, and, and all, you know, James, Andrew, and, and to come follow him off the fishing boats. And when he invites him, like, come follow me and I'll make you, you know, fishers of men. Right. So he invites him, hasn't even spent any time training him, but then immediately tells them, I'm going to send you. So like in, in there from the very beginning, the moment Jesus invites his first followers He's very clear. I'm sending you. Mm. Like, he didn't just say, hey, come follow me, and, and we'll see how it goes. Like, maybe or maybe not, I'll use you. He looks at the first people and sets the tone. Like, this is who I'm going to be. I invite you to follow me, and I know myself as Jesus. I know I can train you, and therefore I'm going to send you. And that's what I encourage people with is sometimes we think we have to be good enough or we've got to get our life together enough. Jesus looks at us, and, and he's never going to endorse you or I, but he's always going to endorse himself and his ability to work through us. Right. And so and when he looks at Desi or Caroline or Philip or you as the listener, he's not trying to get you to be good enough and then go, now I can work with you. Yeah. He's trying to go, will you just submit to me? Mm -hmm. And if you will, I can 100% work through you because I'm Jesus. And that takes so much pressure off of us. Yeah. Like Philip in his own strength doesn't have to clean enough up of my life to go, maybe Jesus will use me now. Philip just has to submit and go, Jesus... I give you my best. I give you my worst. I just, I give you all that I am. Like, mm -hmm. work in and through me today, please. And he can because he's Jesus. Yeah. And so that's when it comes to, you know, inviting and training is great. But but sending, this is what I tell our staff, is the inviting and training is kind of on us in, in the sense of, like, those are things we tangibly have to go do. Those are things we have to be intentional about. Those are things we have to be working toward. But when it comes time to send, it's not really on us. 
like Jesus is going to do that. Yeah. Like Holy Spirit is going to step in and birth things in people's souls on where to send them. Like we didn't have to go to Aaron. If you don't know Aaron, she was our youth pastor and she just went off to Kenya for a full year. No one at Vertical went and said, Aaron, you need to go to Kenya. Yeah. Holy Spirit did. You know, when we sent a team of, of five women, you know, to, to Africa, no one at Vertical went to them and said, you have to go to Africa. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit did. Yeah. You know, but we those are people we've, you know, been inviting towards. Those are people we've helped, you know, walk alongside and train them up. And, and But Holy Spirit's going to send them. You know, and you may be listening right now, and I'm going to encourage you, whether you like it or not, Holy Spirit's going to look to send you yeah. because Jesus from the very beginning laid out this process. Mm-hmm. This is not a vertical process. Yeah. We're literally just looking at what Jesus taught and applying it to our life. Jesus invited people to follow him. Jesus trained them and then sent them. Yeah. And so for us, we don't look at it as, you know, we've got to meet every single person and tell them exactly what God wants them to do. Holy Spirit's going to take care of that. Yeah. But um, to me, that's exciting. And, and we've got to be okay with that. And it's caused us to have bittersweet moments as a church. I mean, think about our short time, four and a half years, we've had to say goodbye to people like Austin and Hadley and send them to Chicago because Holy Spirit's leading them. Like, we've had to say goodbye. Like, we just talked about to Erin. Like, that was hard to see her go for a mm-hmm. year. We believed so much in her and loved having her around. Like, it's, it's hard to have those moments, but we're going to have them. And we'll talk about that in 1023 Leaders. It's always been bittersweet to send because you're like, I love these people. I've, I've, I've walked out life with them, following Jesus with these people. But Holy Spirit's sending them out because this is bigger than us. Yeah. The goal is not to keep as many people at vertical as humanly possible. Mm. It's not a biblical goal. You know, if the biblical goal is to invite, train, and then send, people are going to leave beyond the walls. Mm. And, and it is bittersweet. But it's sweet for a reason because we're seeing people go do what God's asking them to do. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And, and like, I think it's so easy too for me, especially as like a new believer. I was like, sending always means going across an ocean, right? Yeah. You know, like I have to go to a different country. But um, one thing I was talking to my brother one time and, and he was like, man, Jesus has just called us to be like normal, live in a suburb and do ministry there, you know? And they, like, he like wanted to be a missionary and like do this stuff, but that just wasn't what God had for him at that time. And so, you know, yes, it can be Africa for a year or for the rest of your life. But if God's told you to work at Sherman Williams and live in suburb Atlanta, like that's where he has you and your ministry is just as important there as 100%. it is in the desert, you know. Um, and so I just want to encourage you, you guys like listening, like God is not mistaken, you know, like he's put you where you are for a reason. And like your influence there is valid, you know, like it can be used. I'm really glad you brought that up because I think sometimes we try to disqualify ourselves and go, well, if I'm not going across the ocean, well, you feel you were just talking about people that were going to Africa, this or that. I'm not useful for the kingdom. I would go, okay, let's play that scenario out in your mind and just believe that, you know, God's really just not calling you over there because that's super intimidating, and, and God just wants you to use where you're comfortable, and it's easy. Next time you go to the grocery store and Holy Spirit says, hey, go pray for that person, how many of you are not going to be sweating bullets? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? I, I promise you, going overseas and then Holy Spirit telling you to pray for someone, a lot of times it's easier. Because yeah. you're like, I'm never going to see that person again. Yeah. I don't care if they think I'm a weirdo. And so I, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes it's harder to stay where you're at and people know you to go serve Jesus than it is to be sent overseas. Mm-hmm. And so you may think it's you've been called where you're comfortable. I promise you it's going to be uncomfortable a little bit when Jesus starts pushing you out to send you to go work with people around you and goes, hey, go invite that person to follow me. Hey, go spend quality, intentional time with that person. Train them to follow me. Mm-hmm. When he starts sending you with where you're planted, it very much can be uncomfortable, mm-hmm. you know, and that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's the greatest adventure ever. Like, if you're ever just, like, thinking things are dry with the Lord, just, like, drive into town and be like, God, what do you have for me today? And you're probably going to drive past someone on the road, and he's going to say, you need to get out and talk to that person. Like, he, the adventure is there. It's like, do we want to be a part of it? You know. And that, that comes back to something we're super passionate about. We believe God still speaks to us today. We believe Holy Spirit is moving. Mm-hmm. And, and and what you just described, Desi, we believe at this church that God can speak to you in that way every day. Yeah. And when we start to really think that through, it, it does add some weight. Like, yeah, I'm driving into work like, God, will you just provide an opportunity to, for me to just encourage someone today mm-hmm. and, and just show them that you love them and that you're working in their life? 
And then when God answers that prayer, it can be a little messy sometimes. Yeah. And you're going to have to step up, and you're going to have to work through being uncomfortable a little bit possibly. But it doesn't mean God can't move in that moment. Yeah. And he will. Yeah, he's so faithful to do that. Okay, so the next point is 1023 leaders. And so um, the first one's invite, train, sin. And this next point, 1023, what is that number? Why, why do we talk about 1023 at Vertical? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think some people like, hey, is that a Bible verse or this or that? Like some speech, it's not. Like it was just like we just kind of prayed and said this is, this is our first goal. This is our first standard. We want to raise up 1,000 local leaders and 23 global leaders mm. because we feel like in, in the calling, the Great Commission of Matthew, it was local and global. Yeah. And we don't want to focus on one or the other exclusively. We want to do both. And and I think a lot of times people would be like, we were talking about a little bit before this in the podcast, we disqualify ourselves from leadership. We go, oh, oh, I'm not charismatic or, you know, I'm not a male or I don't have enough money or I'm not, you know, a business leader. Like we tell ourselves all these reasons we're not a leader. And I get that because that's the way the world would describe a leader. Mm -hmm. What vertical, what we're going to describe a leader as, you use your skills, gifts, and talents to point people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like you are going to spend your life trying to lead people to follow Jesus, not yourself. Like a lot of times in this world, a great leader gets people to follow them. And we go, no, that's not a great kingdom leader at all. Yeah, that's a cult. <laughs> yeah, a great kingdom leader is always going to lead people to follow Jesus, not themselves. Yeah. And so when I, when I think about that, like, don't disqualify yourself. Like, you know, when Jesus called those guys out of the boat, one of the things, if you go read it in, in the story, they immediately left and went and followed Jesus. It's not about, you know, trying to build your platform or things like that. It's, it's about, I need to follow Jesus. And so... The question I ask in this always, and I think it's a very challenging one, at least it's for me, if people followed me around, could they end up following Jesus? And, you know, is the way I'm living my life, am I clearly following Jesus? Are the things I'm doing going to help point people to Jesus? And if it's not, I do need to change. And so we want to raise up 1,000 local leaders and and 23 that are going to go overseas, you know, or at least outside of our region. You know, I mean, I I think, unfortunately, America is to the point that we can absolutely send missionaries here in the United States. Um, this this country needs to put our focus and attention back on the Lord above all. And so, um, you know, it's bizarre. I, I, we're America, last statistic I looked was the, the third highest rate of missionaries being sent to our country. Like other countries that we would think wow. we need to send missionaries to, those countries are looking at us and saying, I need to send missionaries to the United States. Mm-hmm. We're the third highest. I, I, I think South Korea sends us a ton of missionaries. I, I, I think missionaries that even come out of you know south america and things like that it's bizarre like that should be startling to us as the united states going you know we're the one who sends missionaries and the rest of the world looks at and goes actually we need to send missionaries to you mm-hmm. um but but that's what we want to do is, is raise up 1,000 local leaders people who are going to say i'm going to give my life to point as many people as i can to jesus through my skills gifts and talents i'm just going to show them jesus and uh we're going to send 23 missionaries overseas like i mean i would love to see us have you know, church plants overseas, or maybe we just send our people out and they go help other churches or other missionary organizations. Fantastic. Like, why does our name need to be attached to it? We can still send. Yeah. Because that's the ultimate goal. Jesus' need, name needs to be attached to it, not vertical. Right. So we could send out all 23 people. They all go overseas. They all go work for different missionary organizations. 100% we just fulfilled our 23. Yeah. You know, even though no one knows they're from vertical. Yeah. And so... That's what we're trying to do, and we believe that's just phase one. Mm-hmm. Like we believe, like Lord, if the Lord tarries, like we'll we'll blow past one thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and that's super exciting. So one of the things that I didn't get to talk about in the message was we're going to have vertical leader like um, services, and so we're going to come together and we're going to do like worship together, and we're going to have like a moment of commissioning, and then we're going to have people come and we're we're going to pray, and and people are going to sign their name on a line. Who like kind of says this is what a vertical leader is like, and I'm going to abide by it. Yeah. Like this is what I'm giving my life to, and in, and it's really just going to be shockingly just scripture. Like I'm going to give my my skills, gifts, and talents, and I'm going to point people to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And you're going to sign your name. That's that's how we're going to count them. Is how many people were willing to put their name down on a sheet of paper and say this is what I give my life to now moving forward. And from that, you know, we're going to have cool moments to like get all those people together do leadership um, talks together, go through material together, encourage one another. Mm-hmm. Follow up on how are you doing on pointing people to Jesus. Like you're going to get resources to support and encourage you, and all that's coming. But that's what we're going to do. Like we're going to give people an opportunity 
this is what we teach about. Are you willing to subscribe to it? Yeah. And um, I'm excited for that first service. It's going to be cool. That is so cool. And I love that it's set up that way because, like, those people who are signing the line, they, they haven't arrived. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but it's so easy with tabloids and, like, pop culture to look at these people who are leaders and say, man, I, right now where I'm at, compared to that person where they're at, if they're a leader, then I'm not, you know? But in reality, a true leader is someone who has submitted, you know? Yes. And, and Jesus took, like, Matthew, the tax collector, and was like, I'm going to use you to, and the rest of you 12 guys, to change the world forever. And, like, none of these guys had a ton of influence, you know what I mean? Like, Matthew is a tax collector and was, like, working for the Roman government in, like, a Jewish, like, people group yeah he was not loved. It, you know like harassing people basically financially and and jesus chose to use him and paul murdering christians god chooses to use him and i, I just love that it's set up that way here too because it's just a reflection of what jesus has already done and like we're not looking for people who have like quote unquote made it or arrived or have this long resume of leadership positions it's like have you submitted that's all we ask you know yeah, when we've kind of joked about in the podcast is like, you know, verticals kind of made up of, of non-first round draft picks, you know, yeah. we're, or, you know, a lot of us have made mistakes in life, we're not perfect, you know, we don't have that like Sunday school life all the way through, like we've got some, you know, bruises or some, some, some wounds, you know, some scars from our past and, and we go, but now I'm giving my life to Jesus, you know, and, and not everyone here is, I mean, we've got people at our church who have, you know, have a very clean testimony of, you know, I, I've not made any large mistakes, but I know I have sinned and I give my life to Jesus, and we praise the Lord for that. And we have some people in our church who, you know, they've been in jail and other kind of things, and, and the world's kind of said, I don't know that Jesus can use you. And we go, well, the New Testament says he can. Yeah. And so we're kind of just made up of these people of not, have you or have you not made mistakes, you know, on a big public scale, but but more of, have you given your life to Jesus? So yeah, I mean, sign the line. and. And I, to, to me, that is exciting because that's really what the New Testament is about. Yeah. It's not trying to honor or glorify what mistakes have or haven't we made. We're really here to glorify Jesus. Yeah. So good. The next point is having a marathon mentality, one of the values at Vertical. So as soon as I see that, the first thing I think of is Hebrews 12, 1, like running with endurance. Is that like what you had in mind, like thinking about this? A hundred percent. Like I want us to think about having that perseverance to run that race. Mm. Yeah, so, like, what else does that entail? You know, running a race, yes, that's great, but, like, how do, how do I enact that as, like, a, a member of a Vertical or just, you know, not even a member of Vertical, but just following Jesus? Like, what does that look like on the daily? So if you go read those verses, it talks about fixing your eyes on Jesus. And so we feel like that's so important. You know, we think as a church it's entirely possible um, to get distracted with good things, you know, I, I, I can promise you after being in ministry for years, I could go do ministry and do good things every night of the week. I could go spend zero nights at home with my wife and do good things. Go serve the Lord in ways. And, and I could do it 24-7. I could not sleep and never stop and just mm-hmm. do good things. And we would all go, but that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to get real, real into it, that's not even what Jesus shows us to do. Like you go study Jesus' ministry Jesus goes and gets away and prays. Yeah. Like he lives his life at a slower pace, um, o- almost in American ways, painfully slow and accomplished a ton. And so we go, hey, looking at the life of Jesus and the way he did ministry in three years, and we go look at the New Testament and what it calls us to, we really feel like we're not called here at Vertical to do 75 million things for the glory of God. Yeah. You know, and that's something we talked about at this church from the very beginning, you know, even before I came on staff here. And and that's what we're kind of about is, hey, let's just do what our values talk about. Let's find ways to point people to Jesus. Let's let's be a church that's inviting. Let's let's be a church about training. Let's trust the Lord that he's going to send. Um, and let's leave it that. You know, we're not looking to tack on 75 million other good things. God may call you to do something good, and we will root for you. We'll try to support you if we can. But, but you know, we're not trying to add a bazillion things to our calendar. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know people sometimes who work in ministry— and, like, their staff meeting, they'll go over their church calendar, and it takes hours. Like, hours just to go over all the different events and all the different things we're doing as church. 
And and we're not even saying that's bad or wrong. We're just saying that's not what we're going to do at vertical. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing is just because we're not going to do something at vertical is not us telling other churches you're wrong. Right. It's us just trying to be clear to anyone who wants to be part of vertical, this is who we are and what we're about. You know, if you love a church that's got a lot of events and something every night of the week, there's a lot of great churches that are going to do that, and, and they're going to be a great fit for you. You're going to be severely disappointed with vertical because you're going to look and go, man, I, I feel like you guys aren't, you know, what are you doing? You don't have an event every night of the week. And we would just go, well, we don't really feel like that's how Jesus did ministry. We don't really feel like that's what the New Testament calls us to. You know, it tells us that Paul, even in the New Testament, went into a city and, and he would just teach on Sundays. Says, I, I'm pretty sure was, he was there for like two or three years, and that's what all he did. He would show up on Sundays and teach. But what was he doing the rest of the week? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I just want to encourage our people, if we look like we're moving slow, we may be, but it's very intentional. Right. Um, because we want to run our race with perseverance. Mm. You know, we don't want to be a church that comes and does all these cool things, and then six years from now, everyone's burned out and quits. Yeah. We want to be going, I want, if the Lord doesn't come back, like, and after I passed on, like, I want other leaders that have come out and, you know, they're part of the, you know, the 20,003, 23 movement, you know, one of those leaders has come up and they're leading vertical, yeah. you know, with all other 20,000 leaders that have come. And some of us have passed on to the other attorney, but we're still going. Yeah. But we're still existing because we've run a race with perseverance, mm-hmm. not, not to burn out. Yeah. Man, so good. It's like. It would be so easy to just like sprint the first, you know, quarter mile of the marathon and, and then just trip and fall like six years in, like you said. But I, 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 what? I had friends who there used to be a, a short 5K at Lee mm-hmm. University, Lee U represent, and uh, they would get to the front of the line at the beginning because they knew all the photographers took photos at the very start. So they would literally get to the front and sprint in front of everyone else. And they were in all the pictures. And they looked like they were the best runners ever. Yeah. But you know know where they finished? Nowhere near the top. Yeah. You know, some of the guys would even just come sprint and then go home. (laughs) Like, after they got in the photos. Like, they wouldn't even finish the race. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I think of is like, hey, like, I'm going to sprint. I'm going to be in the photos. People are going to know me, this or that. But you don't end up winning the race, you know. And some of you don't even end up finishing the race, you know. What a good metaphor. It, it was hilarious. I mean, there's there that you could go around campus and see their pictures, and you know, because Lee used to blow up pictures all the time, put them around campus, right. and they just looked like they were phenomenal runners because they're always out at the front. That's so funny. Yeah, man, Jesus just lived at like a slower pace, and like there's never any hurry. Like, I don't know. Like, if we were submitting to that lifestyle, like I feel like the Lord is just like He's never not on time. You know. Um, And, like, even in our seasons of life, like, if if things are so hustled and hurried right now, like, like the Lord has, it is going to provide space for us to slow down and evaluate. And, you know, maybe, maybe it is time to cut some things away. Um, But I love that our church is, like, catered toward that, too, because I think it's a good model for the people who attend to, like, replicate in their own life. 100%. 100%. That's what we're going for. Yeah. We've got this crazy idea that we're going to try to apply Genesis to Revelation to our life mm. and go, what does Genesis through Revelation call me to do? And I'm just going to do it. It's not easy, but we're going to try. Yeah. Mm. I think that's what Jesus wants us to do. That's what we're banking on here. Heck yeah. Well, um, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and checking us out. Um, we'll see you next week with episode 25. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. If you found the content helpful, feel free to like it, subscribe it, share it, maybe tell some friends and you guys want to talk about the content. And, uh, also, uh, thank you to Caroline behind the cameras doing some awesome work with our tech and to Austin Watson from Chicago doing some editing for us. We thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.